desert, dry, dead. That's the image that comes to mind when you think of the Arabian Peninsula. But what if I told you that Saudi Arabia, the land of scorching heat and shifting dunes, is in the middle of an ambitious plan to turn its deserts into sprawling green oases? No, this isn't a metaphor. This is science, technology, and policy working together in one of the most water-scarce regions on Earth. First, let's talk about motivation. You don't wake up one day and decide to plant 10 billion trees in a desert without a good reason. Saudi Arabia faces a climate crisis of its own, with annual rainfall as low as 2 to 4 inches in many areas and rising temperatures that often exceed 50 degrees Celsius in summer. The country is no stranger to environmental stress. According to the FAO, forest cover in the kingdom is less than 0.5%. Then, there's desertification, an existential threat to the kingdom's land and food security. Over 70% of the land is at risk. Add to that dust storms, declining air quality, and increasing urban heat. And you've got a situation that demands action. According to Reuters, the Saudi Green Initiative, announced in 2021 by Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, is not just a national plan, but a declaration to the world. The mission, plant 10 billion trees in Saudi Arabia and 40 billion more across the Middle East under the Middle East Green Initiative. Yes, that's a total of 50 billion trees, the largest reforestation project in the world. Let's zoom in on the numbers. First stop, Riyadh. The capital is undergoing its own transformation under the Green Riyadh project. By 2030, Riyadh plans to plant 7.5 million trees. That's expected to increase green space per resident from just 1.7 to 28 square meters. The goal? Cool the city by 1.5 to 2 degrees Celsius, cut carbon emissions, and, let's be honest, make the place a lot more livable. And they're not doing it with tap water. A 1,350-kilometer-long recycled water network is being built just for this because Saudi Arabia has no permanent rivers, and every drop counts. But the trees aren't just going into cities. Saudi Arabia is restoring its natural ecosystems, too, across deserts, mountains, and coasts. The Saudi press agency disclosed that over 111,000 hectares of degraded land have been rehabilitated. One of the crown jewels? A plan to plant 100 million mangrove trees by 2030. Mangroves aren't just pretty. They're coastal guardians. They protect shorelines from erosion, support fisheries, and act as carbon sinks. And Saudi Arabia has already opened the Middle East's largest mangrove nursery to hit that target. Now, let's address the obvious. How do you keep millions of trees alive in the desert without draining your water supply? Three words, wastewater, desalination, and innovation. Most of the urban tree planting projects use 100% treated wastewater. Riyadh's green initiative is entirely irrigated by recycled water. For coastal restoration, desalinated seawater fills the gap. But here's where it gets more interesting. Saudi Arabia is also making it rain, literally. In 2023 alone, the government launched over 400 cloud seeding flights across six regions to boost rainfall. Water is the big question. You can't turn desert to oasis without water. Saudi Arabia knows this better than anyone. This is a country with no permanent rivers and very little rainfall. Historically, they relied on underground fossil aquifers, old water, water trapped deep below the sand to do small-scale greening. Remember those famous satellite images of green circular farms in the Saudi desert? Those were made by huge pivot irrigators tapping underground water. Satellite image of circular crop fields in the Saudi desert created by center pivot irrigation using ancient groundwater. In the 1980s to 90s, Saudi Arabia used such methods to grow wheat in the desert, but the approach was unsustainable as aquifers depleted. That that old approach in the 80s worked for a while. Desert farms thrived on non-renewable water, but it wasn't sustainable. In some areas like Wadi Ad-Dawasir, the water table was dropping by up to 6 meters, 20 feet per year back then. Fast forward to today, the new greening initiatives explicitly avoid guzzling fossil groundwater. Instead, Saudi Arabia is leveraging two things it has in abundance, sunshine and technology. First, desalinated water. 
Saudi is the world's largest producer of desalinated water. They take seawater from the Red Sea, or Gulf, remove the salt, and use it for drinking and irrigation. Some of this desal capacity is being directed toward irrigation for these green projects. It's expensive water, but as renewable energy, like solar power, grows, desalination is becoming more viable and eco-friendly. Second, and more importantly, recycled wastewater. Cities like Riyadh, Jeddah, and others are ramping up water recycling so that treated sewage water, which would otherwise be wasted, gets piped to parks, roadside plantings, and farms. For example, that green Riyadh project we mentioned is entirely irrigated by recycled water. They're also experimenting with micro-powered water treatment plants that clean sewage and generate energy. And they've developed AI systems that monitor tree health using satellite data, soil moisture sensors, and drone surveillance. Then there's drone planting and AI. Drone planting is being tested to rapidly seed large areas with tough plant species. Instead of planting one seedling at a time by hand, drones can scatter thousands of seeds in biodegradable pods over remote desert areas in a matter of minutes. Saudi Arabia has plans to disperse 300 million seeds through aerial techniques over the next few years. They're also using satellite monitoring and AI analytics to track which areas are greening successfully and which need extra help. For example, identifying seedling die-off quickly so replanting can happen. And speaking of rain, Saudi Arabia is literally trying to make it rain. They've launched a cloud seeding program, using planes and drones to seed clouds with harmless particles, encouraging them to drop more rain on targeted areas. By hitting the right clouds, they've seen up to a 20% increase in rainfall from those clouds under ideal conditions. In 2023 alone, over 400 cloud seeding flights were conducted across six regions of the country. It's not a magic bullet, but it can squeeze a bit more water from the sky. And when every drop counts, 20% extra rain in a normally dry region could be what keeps newly planted trees alive through the summer. One KAUST project is literally figuring out how to turn sand into fertile soil. A team led by Professor Homanshu Mishra has developed a special carbon-rich soil enhancer made from abundant local waste like chicken manure, believe it or not. That can be mixed with desert sand. The treated sand holds water like a sponge and provides nutrients to plants. In an experimental farm plot, using this enhanced soil, formerly dry, lifeless sand has been transformed into a green plot teeming with vegetation. Yes, chicken poop is helping make the desert bloom. Who saw that coming? Crucially, they're also choosing the right kinds of plants. The emphasis is on native or drought-adapted species, plants that naturally survive with minimal water. You're not going to see English lawns or water-guzzling exotic trees in these projects. Instead, expect to see a lot of date palms, acacia, cider, goff, juniper in the mountains, and mangroves on the coasts. These species can handle the heat and long, dry stretches. As the land heals, nature returns. And not just plants, wildlife is making a comeback too. Arabian oryx, once nearly extinct, are now roaming again in protected reserves. Sand gazelles, red foxes, and migratory birds are also returning to areas where vegetation has regrown. There are even plans to reintroduce the elusive Arabian leopard, one of the rarest big cats on the planet, into restored habitats. And sometimes, nature just needs a little nudge. In some protected areas, over 7 million plants have regenerated naturally without being planted just by limiting grazing and human activity. So how much progress have they made so far? As of 2024, over 95 million trees have been planted across the country. More than 100,000 hectares have been restored. And over 100 organizations, from public agencies to local volunteers, are involved. By 2030, the goal is to hit 600 million trees. That's just phase one. The ultimate vision, 10 billion. Back in the cities, parks are becoming part of daily life. King Salman Park in Riyadh, when completed, will be the largest city park in the world, 13.4 square kilometers. That's four times the size of New York's Central Park. This is about more than carbon and conservation. It's about livability, quality of life, a green legacy for future generations. Turning deserts into forests isn't a dream anymore. It's a work in progress. Saudi Arabia's transformation is ambitious 
ambitious, experimental, and far from complete. But it's proving something important, that even in the harshest environments, with the right science, strategy, and vision, green is possible. And this time, the oasis isn't a mirage.